Hi there, this is Bob Wormsley from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time. And on today's video, we're going to be taking this particle simulation. It's cached and we're going to be mining the particle data that's contained within these particles using Redshift to create some nice rendering effects. So let's begin. In our scene, we have this particle sim. This has all been cached um, so we can get this render set up really efficiently. Uh, so what we have here are our particles and there's bits of particle data that we're going to use to drive these effects, namely the color of the particle. And we're also going to use this animating radius value to drive some cool rendering effects as well. So let's get cracking. First of all, we're going to need some light in the scene. So we're going to go to our Maxon asset browser here. And if you just type in HDRI, you'll get a list of the HDRIs. And what we're looking for are the studio HDRIs for this. Um, you can use any one you want, really. I mean, you may you may have your own library of studio HDRIs, but I'm going to use one, uh, this one here. I'm going to bring this one into our scene. There we go go so now if we start rendering you're going to see that we can see that in the background but nothing else we need to go to our cached emitter we need a tag render tag redshift object it knows it's on an emitter and because of that it reveals a particles tab in there we need to change the mode to instance some geometry we want sphere instances and now we're seeing our spheres in our scene i'm just going to come out of this scene camera we're going to uh, add a large plane in the background so let's add a plane primitive we're going to have this on the plus z axis we're going to move it back behind our spheres and then we're going to make this really big maybe 4000 by 4000 something like that if we go back into our camera there we have got that going on all right so now let's start getting a material first for our particles we're going to go to the material manager and let's double click to make a new material stick it on the emitter in this material we want to use the color data of these particles to drive the color so let's double click and for that we need a user data node and it's the color user data and this color user data by getting the right attribute name we can get that particle color these random black and white values so let's go to presets for the attribute name particles particle color let's solo the node and now we're getting those black and white colors for our particles. We can then use these colors to assign particles a color from a gradient. So let's double click, put in ramp. We've got a ramp node. And let's feed those colors into the ramp node. Now on the ramp node, what we're going to do, let's click on this. We're going to, you can, you could create any colorful ramp you like. We're going to go to the presets. You could use any of these Maxon ramps, um, depending on what color palette you're going for. We have saved this ramp here. Let's double click. And if we then solo that, now it is mapped those colors to the black and white values of the particles. So we're getting this nice um, spread of particles very cool okay so now what we can do let's unsolo that we can feed that color into the base color of our material and now we have got those shiny particles with those colors that we want very good let's just go into our standard material i want this to be not very rough at all very shiny and let's just leave everything else default for now and we'll just come out of there for a moment we could do a little bit more light in this scene i'm going to go to my external and let's put our intensity onto two to make that brighter all right that's looking cool now the other bit of particle data we're going to use to drive this is our um, animating radius size and what we're going to do we're going to use this to make our particles go into a transparent glass color so let's go back into our material and we need another user data node let's double click type in user and this time to get the particle radius it's a scalar data type let's get that we'll solo it it'll be black because we haven't got any data yet and the attribute name we have to get it right again so we can find it in the presets let's go to particles and we want the size look now 
I'm not sure if you can see, there is a very slight difference in those color values dependent on size, but we're not kind of getting the full range where the smallest ones are black and the largest ones are white. And that's because Redshift doesn't know. We need to give it those values. And we do that, let's double click, with a change range node. Let's get this change range. All right. And what we'll do is put that in the input. Now with the change range, what we need to give it is the old range min and max. We need to put in what the minimum radius is and what the maximum radius is of our scene. So to find that, look, let's go to highlight our emitter. We're going to go to Insidium, X particles, utilities, console. Now by default, let's just switch this to default. By default, it doesn't show the radius. It just shows the particle ID and the age of every particle. Look, and if we scroll down, every single particle in our scene, um, it's showing the age. We want to show the radius. So we go to data to display. Let's show the radius channel. And now each one, it tells us what the radius is. If we want to see what the minimum maximum radius is of all these different particles, we can just double click here. And the minimum radius is one maximum radius is 104. So let's put those um, numbers into our change range. So it was one minimum, 104 maximum. Let's go forward a frame, solo our change range. Yes, so now we're getting the full range. Smallest ones are black, largest ones are white. Brilliant. So what we're going to do is use this to drive the transparency of this glass. So let's unsolo that for a minute. We'll go to our standard material. First, we'll switch on the glass. So in the transmission settings, we'll put the weight on one. This will make all of them fully transmissive. So they're all just glass objects now. But what we're going to do is drive this weight with our black and white values from our change range. So to open this weight up as an input so we can put that in, all we do is hold control, click on this little button. It creates an input on our node here. Look, weight just appeared. So then we can put that into the weight. And now the biggest ones are 100% see-through, the smallest ones have no um, transparency at all. Now, we don't want this to happen over the full range of our particles. Um, so let's go to our change range. We want these to be fully opaque until the particles are maybe 35 centimeters. And then we want them to be fully transparent by the time they've got to 60, something like that. So now if we scrub forwards a bit so we got particles in the scene and we've got mostly opaque particles but when they get to a certain size they turn and they start to become fully transparent that's looking really cool and we get to the point where we've got these really nice kind of refractions of um, particles as they grow and shrink um, so that's looking really cool brilliant so let's just switch that off the final step is to make this look a little bit more coherent is we have a background here but it's just gray that's our plane and it's always a good idea or often a good idea especially with these abstract types of shots is to make your background the same color as one of the elements in the foreground um, and then it makes it kind of a very kind of coherent look so the way i'm going to do that i'm going to take this yellow so let's go back to our particle um, color let's go to our ramp which is driving that color and the yellow look we'll just select that yellow knot I'm gonna right click and copy that yellow and then we're gonna make a new material let's double click let's put this on our plane and in that new material we want the color let's right click paste in that yellow I want the roughness to be on full and then, yeah, that's looking really good, isn't it? So now we have got um, a background which shares colors with some of our heroes and it draws it all together. So there we go. We're using various different particle data types to drive these nice uh, redshift effects for this cool abstract animation.